Okay, hi there. So Daphne and I are together again after her third of four dragon walks. It is October 12th, 2021 on a Tuesday and she finished her walk on Sunday. It was over the Saturday and Sunday. And um, I know a little bit about it already, but I'm gonna let her tell us all. And I'm gonna listen to the whole, whole story myself because I only know a tiny little bit about what she experienced. So yay. Thank you, Daphne, for, for being here, for doing that and recording this. I'm really looking forward to hearing. Yeah, thank you, Susanna. And um, I don't know if, I guess you have shared a little bit through your blogs, but uh, this uh, has come through you in a way um, by me asking a question about healing my toenails and and it's been a gradual process and then it just transpired as I began to walk my sacred land which was the instruction right that uh, I received through you um that um the the walks that I'm doing are um are about um awakening uh the the elements um within and and i guess without and um and so it's kind of tuning into the land and um i don't know it's quite a mysterious thing what's happening so it's very hard to put words uh, in, uh, it's very hard to explain it but it's a it's an it's an experience Right. And um, talk a little bit, you know, we, we, we were mentioning just before we pressed record that um, you had planned a, um, a, a series of, of classes or, or a big coursework that's going to be starting off in November and how this kind of links to it. Yes, exactly. So uh, quite a few years back now, uh, eight years ago, I um, joined a program that is called the Women's Initiatory Journey. And that, that's uh, through that, I, I, uh, that was the nature of the, of the journey, I suppose. It's, um, uh, ex it's experience, it's um, connecting with the elements that uh, we have. We're made, you know, we, we incarnated in this life. And so we are, we have earth, uh, fire, water, and air, and, and these elements exist everywhere on this earth. Uh, they, you know, constitute everything, including our bodies. So um, we are reclaiming this relationship. Uh, and because, you know, through, through the culture that we grew up, we, we kind of separated our earthly um existence uh to to the to the spiritual um entities that we are so it, there's been a separation and we're not going to go into this but that was the whole nature of of this journey is about it's through the elements it's a map is a map basically so we we each follow there are many ways of um awakening the soul um uh, so this is one of the maps is through the elements um right. and and so you know so that was my experience then and for me it's been it's changed my life it transformed my life it led then into meeting you and um and uh, you know doing all the the amazing things that we've been doing together bringing through the well receiving your channeling of goddess consciousness and and then goddess astrology and um connecting even more deeply with uh what i began uh you know through the journey and um yeah and so and so after doing this, I feel like uh, talking to you now, I realize that um, this is a result of integrating the, all the information, you know, that I've been receiving over these last eight years. And it's leading to this. 
Right. Uh, and then right. there will be another thing after that. But yeah, this is the point of integrating um, all this that I have been receiving. And, you know, because with the goddess consciousness, we also talked about the dragons and the directions and the elements. And um, I mean, we didn't talk about them. We, you know, you, you channeled, yeah, the information. And, right. Oh. They were the they were the basis of the whole astrology thing, the the quantum consciousness beginning of of all that came up into the whole astrology system, I guess, right. that we're using. Yeah, and and um, talk so you, about you've been, bring, you've been bringing them through in a different way than what I had received or experienced, and so I feel like everything is kind of integrating in, in a way that I can't quite put it into words yet because it's yeah. very fresh yeah. it's happening so as we speak. there's lots of things not just with us but lots of different informations now that are all coming together and we're seeing the connection it, it's pretty astounding I mean this is happening in uh, the meeting that we had yesterday with Eileen and Eduardo and you know their their Mayan perspective of things and it's just like so thrilling and now with my connection with um, the Nilotic line uh, through Prem in South Africa and uh, the white lions and all that information is starting to come through now and uh, mention uh, uh, briefly about the awakening woman that's coming up in November that all of this dragon walking is sort of like leading up to and and very synchronously not not planned. <laughs> Yeah, so I, for me, just to go back a bit, when, um, so I was away when I was receiving, you know, as you know, I, I started this, uh, I did the women's initiatory journey when I lived in England, and I, I was living there for 20 years, I was born in Crete, but I left when I was 18, and then I went to Spain, and that's when I met you, I mean, I didn't meet you in Spain, but I was there when I met you right. online, and and so um, when I, I've been feeling the call to come back to Crete for quite a few years before I actually came back. So I needed to kind of um, become more self-sufficient, stronger in myself, I would say. Um, and when I guess I was enough in a place of, okay, now I'm ready to give. Uh, I, I came back and I could not resist the call anymore, although there was resistance. Yeah, you really didn't want to for a while, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so about um, a few months after I was here, I received the instruction that um, the women's initiatory journey has to happen here in Crete. And, and when is that like 2018 or something like that when you first came back yeah yeah and so for a year after i received the instruction all i was getting was no <laughs> because i i i spoke to elizabeth who is the you know the bringer of this uh, offering and the facilitator of the offering and she's been my teacher for you know many years now and she was um saying no she doesn't feel uh the impetus to come and it needs she needs to feel a call she needs to feel something deeper moving her which she said it could be to do with me as well you know of me reclaiming more my power and then i can move mountains you know i can move her and whoever so she was not saying no forever she was encouraging me to step more into my power but you know she was i'm not feeling it yet right so um this is how we navigate this is how we navigate that's a very good point because we we wait to feel that impulse inside that motivates that's forward yeah and I, we talked about that perhaps in a, a an earlier blog you know um what was the name of it like the demonstration the demonstration you know how, how this is the it was um all about demonstrating what we're talking about yeah yeah and yeah so anyway very quickly after that um she started to become more open to this idea 
and you know gradually the resistance grows dissolving more and more and more because we started about you know first i i offered okay um let me know your fees and we'll pay you and she was like no i, I don't care then she accepted to get paid gradually and then uh by then because it was so difficult basically for me i was new here and Greece is a society that is, there's a lot of resistance, at least Crete. Maybe if I was in Athens, it would be actually easier. But here, anyway, in Greece, no one knows me. In Crete, no one knows me. Um, I hadn't, I'm not really active, as you know, with the social media. I'm not out there promoting, producing content. Uh, it hasn't happened yet. I don't know if it will. Um, and so really i was demanding quite a lot <laughs> you know i was i was demanding in a way i'm using this word it's not exactly my it's not my approach because if we demand we don't really get anywhere but i was <laughs> i was uh, yeah i was um initiating uh, a process that i was not going through the normal channels that people usually use to generate uh, momentum and to gather people and to show their presence and all of these things, you know? Old, old paradigm stuff, right? Maybe, I don't know, you know, I still don't know if, um, you know, I'm still in an inquiry about it. I'm just following my heart and my, um, you know, what feels authentic for me and, you know, I am holding a question about it that maybe there will be a time that I will, that it, this will feel um, the right thing to do for me. Um, yeah. yeah. Or maybe I will be, I need to get ready. I'm not ready yet. I don't know. It doesn't feel like I'm not ready, but who knows? Right. What's going on there? Um, <laughs> but I quite like, you know, this. Um, I don't know if it's a challenge, but it is definitely a very different way of doing things. It is a challenge. It is a challenge because we're moving into a whole different paradigm and we don't have any templates. We're making the templates. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that that excites me hearing you say that it's it excites me as a thought, you know, so I'm going to keep that. And, you know, and I, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know if um, I'm meant to be doing things more, you know, in the in the conventional way. But you know, I like this what you just said. Um, and so, so anyway, it's been taking time, and and that's been quite interesting because I, in a way, I I always have this pattern, which I. I receive an instruction all my life. This has been the case to to create something, to do something that would probably be um, quite easy and straightforward for many other people. But for me, somehow it's a drama. <laughs> it's a drama for my ego, but it's uh, it's because for me, it's like for my um, circumstances for my skill set for my whatever my resources um what would appear to be a straightforward easy process uh, easy thing for someone else to achieve for me it's a big thing a really big thing it was almost asking for the impossible in in some ways and this has been a theme in my life and so it's the same with this. It's like so for some people, okay, they decide to invite a facilitator, you know, they need 20 women, you know, and for some people, it, this just happens and it's not a big deal, you know, and... I totally um, relate to what you're saying. I know it, it's, um, and I think that's because we are operating under different circumstances in some way. Yeah, I guess for me, it's my it's the the ground that i am and uh, that i'm discovering who i am that's how i see it anyway i yeah. see it as, you know this is it's part of your process of growth exactly. you're not just saying 
here's my teachings or, you know, something like that. It, it, you're in process throughout it. Yeah, absolutely. I understand. Yeah. 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 So it's the same with this, uh, these walks, you know, and I'll tell you, it's just so relevant what we are saying now. Uh, it actually supports me to get clarity about what's just happened in this, in this uh, last element, the fire Great. element. And um, anyway, so it's taken, it's taking a long time. Since 2018, um, Elizabeth has come twice and just to run uh, introductory weekends uh, as part of the process of um, uh, making herself known here because mm. what we are, this journey that she's offering is a really big commitment. It takes you really deep uh, into your soul, uh, into one soul. It's, uh, it's about awakening the soul. It's, um, it's, uh, it's a deep journey and it's um, like a deep learning process. And so it's a big commitment. Um, it's like when you study something, you know, that kind of, that requires your full-time attention. Right, right. yeah. Uh, it's not just the thing that you do on the side, you know, it just like when I was studying with you, you know, I had to do my daily uh, practices. <laughs> and, right. yeah, it wasn't just meeting, you know, uh, once every three weeks and that was it. I had to engage in a daily uh, practice. So it's it's like this. And, and so, yeah, it's a big commitment for women. And it means that they, they need to know who is this person? You know, why am I committing to this, you know? Um, and so she's come a couple of times and, um, and so now it feels like we are, ready uh that's i still um on a practical level it's not confirmed but i feel on an energetic level i feel it's it's happening it's taking place uh, and i have no doubts um and you've just finished your third walk next week you're scheduled for your fourth and final walk possibly a final walk there, there's a fifth element left to do yeah. and we don't have any information about that yet but i suspect it's going to come after that fourth walk yeah yeah so it's the ether element so yeah we don't know we have some information but we don't know what it includes and yeah right right and so yes yeah, so going so so whilst we've been um because uh, originally we thought that we were going to start last January, January 2021. But then all the COVID things, uh, people's like, because we had enough women that were committed at that point, but then everything changed. So it got delayed, right, right, right. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, the dragons knew what was going on to begin with, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, and maybe, it's part, yeah, it's God knows what's, what's happening there because there is definitely resistance in the field. I feel it. So, yeah, so we, this is a real thing, you know, and so we are, we are dancing with that resistance and we are uh, building our own um, uh, grace and ability to dance with that resistance and to get more skillful, I feel. And then there will come a point when, you know, it, 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 and it feels like we're very close. Yeah, um, it does. It does we we've just entered into a new um, a new phase? I guess I'm calling them now. Okay. So, do you want to give us some yeah, highlights? So, so, just to say that whilst we've been waiting, you know, since January, then this uh, this channeling came from you. Exactly. And I started uh, walking the elements, which I didn't know that that's what I was doing when I was receiving your instruction. I know. I know. And, and now I know. it feels immediately relevant. And, you know, we still, we still here, we're still receiving. And when did that happen? When was that? Do you remember when that uh, question, your question came through and it all started? It must have been March or April because oh. I started the walks in May. Oh, I received okay. the information and a few weeks later, uh, you know, for me, I didn't know when or, yeah, I was going to do it at some point. Right, right. Okay, so and the walk started in May, okay. And then you couldn't do any in the real heat of the 
summer, July, yeah. August was like a no-go. So that and was June, that was the heat yeah. wave came early. I was the plan was that they would be finished by July, but, <laughs> but uh, the heat wave came very early. Uh, by the twentieth of June, we had a heat wave, which is That's never right. Yes. yes. And so we were waiting for this fire element because it was the, the most difficult uh, terrain. The, it's the most difficult um, hike in the whole of Crete. Um, so, and there's no water or anything on the route. And so, you know, so we, we had to make sure that the weather conditions were appropriate. So here we are, and, and it was, um, yeah, so it was an interesting process because as you know, I had no idea. We were, we've planned it so many times, this firewalk. First was June, then we uh, postponed it for the weekend after, but then the heat carried on. And then we said, okay, yes, July, August, we're not walking. Right. Then as you know, I got ill in September right and my body wasn't ready uh to do this and so now we are at the point where it's either now or next year because um the weather is you know quickly becoming colder and um yeah because the thing is is um you i i definitely i could not carry a heavy bag and there was a big possibility that we had to stay overnight to split the route in two because most people do it this way. Um, and so we had to make sure that the weather was warm enough still to make it possible for us to oh, right, right, right. to spend you know the time in to spend the night outdoors without having to carry you know, tents and sleeping bags and all of that. <clears throat> right, right. So the thing is that uh, because of the unpredictability of the season, I would I was checking the weather because, we, you know, I had to keep that flexibility in my diary and we had to be ready to cancel and alter and, you know, and go at short notice. And of course, ideally, I wanted to be uh, prepared physically, emotionally, um, and everything, you know, um, and I wasn't because um, I was ill. I was not able to go to and practice to do my training. And uh, because of, um, anyway, a lot of other creative things that are happening in my life right now, I am not able to keep my routines, you know, my sleeping routines and everything. There's a lot of change at the moment in yeah. my life and I'm trying to find the new balance. And so it means that I'm not, I'm not feeding myself the way I want to, you know, I'm not, I'm, I was not doing the things that I needed, that I felt I needed to do in order to be in a good shape. And, but it became clear that, um, you know that we had to go now and then suddenly one day before uh, this weekend the weekend that has just gone uh, the weather was predicted to be rainy and stormy and so we had left the idea and then suddenly i checked the weather one day uh, before we left and it had in fact, the day that we left on oh, no, one, anyway, very close. No, Saturday. I think it was Friday that we messaged and you said we're going yeah. tomorrow because the weather's cleared. No, we left on Friday night. Oh, you did leave so, on Friday night. Okay, so it was Friday day, maybe. Friday day, we decided that we are leaving on the same night. Yes, it was like that. On Friday day, we decided that we had to go. And and so I had actually had two sleepless nights by that point, and 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 so we just went packed, left, and now what happens is we arrive at the village of the departure, which is Suya, which is the area that you know last time uh, we were talking about the air element the first walk that we did and we talked about the 
at those times in the ancient times, you know, before the destruction of um, with the earthquake and everything, that there was a heightened economic activity in the area. Yeah. Yes. And there were the two Lisos and Suya and Ayerumeli, the place that we were going with the common currency and everything. Right. So now check this out. So we arrive at Suya, the village, uh, the seaside village, and nearly mid-October, everything is full. There is no place for us to stay. Everything is packed and we are not prepared. We cannot stay on the beach. We, you know, because what our preparation for staying overnight, the, what we had thought is we had left a backpack full of things in the end. <laughs> oh, right. And we had arranged with the boat guy to, so that we call him if we need to stay um, overnight. And so he can bring us our things by boat and we can, you know, use the sleeping bags and the tent and everything and stay overnight. And then he would take the stuff back and we would carry on with the walk. And that was the plan. But at, at that village, we had we could not stay out. It was very cold. So it's still warm weather, but at night it gets really cold and especially by the sea. And so we were there and I was already with warm clothes and still feeling cold and there was nowhere to stay. Um, you know, 800 people, 800, there was a, there was a techno party. Um, <laughs> and there was like for people from all over the world. And I, and I, like a convention or something, huh? Yeah. And, um, and yeah. I was not expecting this in October, you know, this is how it is in August. And so then I'm starting to look and I'm now this is 10 o'clock at night at all the all the surrounding villages within a 10 mile radius uh, radius and it's it's not a this is not a touristy we're talking about villages up the mountain you know there is no reason it's just unless you want to do a hike it's not the the usual tourist attraction mm -hmm. and everywhere was full and I was I was, um, I went to the local, I found some locals that own a restaurant and, you know, there everyone knows people and, the rel and even the surrounding area, the villages, you know, they kind of all are relatives or far relatives. So they started calling all the relatives <clears throat> and all, all the people there, that's how they live. They have rooms and they rent out for the tourist season or restaurants. And so that's, that's the way of earning money. And so I made this, somehow it came through this link that normally in Crete, are you okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, just had a, I just had a thing that made a noise and I'm like, what is that? Okay. <laughs> so yeah, normally in Crete, if my experience is everyone is so hospitable and you know open, and um, and so when every time before that I've been to a village, and that I decided last minute that I somehow had to stay overnight, I would knock on the door, ask who can host me in the village. I would pay, of course, although always they never ask for money, but I would always offer to pay and I just want a room somewhere to stay or a bed. And in every village you go in Crete, you get, you know, someone will open the door. And That's such a lovely thing. It just sounds like a fantasy from another era to me. I love it. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Anyway, but there in that village, I said to the people, come on, you know, does one of you have a bed? Like, or do you know someone with a spare bed? And I'll pay and we'll pay it was me and Eladina. And no one was offering or they didn't know anyone who could offer that. And I thought, wow, you know, this is what happens when, you know, tourism comes and then suddenly this is how you're making your money you know and th this is a you know this is a hospitality becomes commerce yeah but for me it was so strange you know in crete it's like really <laughs> it's not it's not what you find and um anyway and in the end they said okay there is 
there is this old guy, he used to have um, rooms that he was renting, but now they haven't been cleaned for years and they're old and it's in a really bad state and he's weird. And, uh, you know, and they said, oh, do you, do you want to have a look? But we didn't have any other option. So we go and, oh my God, Susanna, it was horrific. And, and the toilets were public, which means that he, there was no one there anyway, but it means that it was also his, there was one toilet that he was using too. So it was kind of room, room toilet, and then his room somewhere, you know. And so, and the mattresses were so dirty and every, everything covered in dust and everything really old, like a stable would have been nicer, I think. And, <laughs> and, um, Trial yeah, by fire, right? I mean, that's you're doing the fire element. This sounds like trial by fire, right? I mean, yeah. And anyway, and and so then anyway, we uh, I I took the curtain down because it looked fairly clean, and I covered the mattress. And then we had um, another throw that we put on top of the curtain. And then we had our jumpers, and we just covered ourselves in one small bed. And we basically, I didn't get much sleep all night because underneath was the restaurant. There was noise all night long because of the party. And I couldn't sleep much, but I was grateful to at least have a place to straighten my, my body, you know? Yeah, and you could be out of the elements. Yeah, and so, yeah, and then we got up at um, 5.30 and we began like this you know, with this, uh, not a very nice breakfast because there was a bakery and, you know, it's not, it's not healthy, good stuff that you'd normally want to eat before, or I would want to eat before right. such a walk. So I started sleepless, uh, almost, and, and I already I didn't have much sleep that week. And, and so the, I mean, it was the most beautiful walk um but my body was getting tired very quickly and so now um there is nowhere on the route that tells you how much you've covered and how much you have left so we were using our phones as much as we could get reception to get a sense um, so we were having a bit of a sense of timing, but not fully, because also you don't really know, it depends on the terrain. Yeah. You know, so we couldn't get a full sense of that and how long it would take us. Um, so, you know, what, what distance you see on the map, it's kind of quite irrelevant for this kind of terrain because it's just so right. mountainous right. and you don't know how many mountains you have to go up and down for, right. you know, this much distance on the map. Right. <laughs> so, um, but we were, yeah, we were uh, on the way, we were having fun, we were enjoying nature, and we were uh, each of us uh, going through our own personal challenges at this point and we both experienced in transformation and, and experience so that I I really let go of something that was bothering me really deeply that um, I've, I I really didn't know how to go about it and it's uh, and it's not something there was a deep part of me that felt that um, that I should not compromise, you know? And, and then somehow I made peace in the process. And I saw clearly, I, it, it was like I gained clarity and perspective about what it is that's happening. And that um, I am, for some reason, I am required to make this sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And it's not straightforward. You know, if I, I think if I, tell anyone no one would have said oh let it go or you know it's not the kind of thing that people can advise you yeah 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 it's yeah. a very personal right. decision right. and most people you know if I had said that you know this is I can't let it go this is important 
and I cannot compromise. Um, most people would agree, I feel. Um, it's that kind of thing. And, and I got a personal clarity about why the, this contract is there and what is what is facilitating up to a certain extent. And, and this is part of the sacrifice that I have to make. And, and That's great. you know, often, um, I know I've read lots of spiritual stories where people have like breakthrough experiences like that, like great clarity when they've been like, they have absolutely no, what we would call our inner reserves, like no sleep, no food, you know, that whole thing. So that, that goes along totally with what you've just right. said, you know, it's a, it's kind of like a, a spiritual technique that is done to one. We don't choose it, you know, but yes, it, yes. it evolves in our yes. life. Yes. And, um, and it's immediately related with Alithi and oh. you know, I mean, we're not going to go into it now, but it's, it's, uh, it has to do with me, me and us birthing this vision. Excellent. And, and Excellent. it's part, it's a nice sacrifice that I'm for some reason requested to make. Okay, so I look forward to hearing more about that later. And it's quite contradictory because all the values of Alithi in my, you know, are actually, I would, exp I would explain it as the opposite of what I am being asked to sacrifice. Well, perhaps it, it's, you know, another one of these things that we find, you know, um, is that there's, um, one is asked to trust and it might seem contrary to the trajectory that we're on or whatever like that. But if we're given that strong message that this is what to do rather than just like our ego is doing it or whatever, yeah. you know, or we're formulating it ourselves. And then who knows, it might change as you go through the trust process. Yes, yeah. As I heard you say that now, the word that came to me is grace. Yeah, and, exactly. And it's, and it's like, I don't, we don't actually know how it works. We don't know, and we don't know what to expect. And that's this whole thing with the, from the beginning of the dragon walks and from the beginning of the beginning of the dragon walks, you know, with, with your work with Elizabeth and our work together. I mean, it's always been this um, jump off into the abyss and yeah. you know, your, your one is buoyed up, it, 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 it works out, but uh, on the spiritual path, one has to do these remarkable, seemingly remarkable things yeah yeah and it's so it's to be on that kind of a ride you know it's it's blessed yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah anyway so then when we were okay so there was a point that everyone who does this walk they tend to stop there and spend the night this particular beach and so now we knew we were close on the map, but we didn't know exactly how much time was left. We estimated one or two hours. And that was the point that we had agreed with a boat uh, friend that if we should we decide to stay overnight, he'd bring our stuff there. So by that time, although we, to start with, we left and we were like, yes, let's do the walk, like, you know, in one day. <laughs> and let's because a friend has done it you know people have done I, most people stop overnight and that was the advice that everyone was giving us to stop overnight but i have i do have a friend who's walked it in one go and i i know so in my you know in my understanding this was possible so we were determined to start with let's just finish it and so when we got to that point, we kind of thought, okay, our bodies are getting tired and we don't know what's involved. And we knew that the, the most difficult part of the route was after the, that beach. So we thought, okay, it is actually, we're not gonna make it probably. So let's now make a, take, a, take a decision and ask the boat friend to be, bring our stuff. So we called him 
and we said, you know, can you please, we're here and can, can we call you when we get there to bring our stuff? And he said, well, um, the sea is very rough and I cannot come to the shore. So I'd have to put the bag inside a, a plastic bag and you have to swim out to get it. <laughs> And, and, he oh said, and I love it. Oh my God. And he said, definitely tomorrow, I will not be able to come and pick up your things because the way the, it's going to be even rougher. So it will have to stay there. And so we were now thinking, okay, so anyway, let's, let's get there and we'll see. So we got there and we were, uh, two hours later, we were exhausted. Eledina could not take another step. So, and we were sat there and then I thought the original plan was that we take, oh, he, his advice was you still have five hours of daytime. So just do it just come he said uh, you know that the it's a three hour walk apparently from the beach that we were possibly staying overnight to the destination so he said you have enough time and i said to him you know well we have enough time if we were rested and if our body was not aching but you know we also have to factor this in and i said to her it's a risk so when we got there at the beach and we took a break and we went into the water and you know and actually it was very hard to go into the water so at that point i realized that it's almost impossible for for us to swim out and and get the bag like he was suggesting and so i said to her okay so this is out of the question and also, what's the point? Because he will not be able to come tomorrow to pick up the bag. So what are we doing? Uh, are we walking? And so she was exhausted. And then I checked the time. By the time we had gone into the water, we had rested, we had calmed down, and we were having this conversation. I checked the time, and it was very risky and late. I think we had two or three hours of daytime left. and you know, and yeah, people say that it's usually it's a four hour walk. And he said three, but, and so I said, okay, and it's a dangerous walk. So you cannot risk uh, being stuck up the right. path in the middle of the night. So, so, but you know, so I was in a, we were in a dead end. We didn't know what to do. We didn't have anything to stay overnight and we could not carry on. So at that point, because I kept my phone uh, on, you know, airplane mode the whole time so that I don't consume my battery. But I actually, no, I, I switched it on to check. I don't know, I wanted to check something, the time, the weather, something, I don't remember. And I switched it on. And at that point, uh, Boaz was calling me. So, I picked it up and I said, look, I don't have time now. I need to think and uh, I can't speak to you. You know, I was in that mode and he said, well, what's wrong? And anyway, I explained and he said, okay, so stay there, find a, a shelter, light a fire and keep yourself warm. Do you have water? Yes. Do you have some something to eat? Yes. Okay. So do that. And then, uh, you know, so because I was not even thinking <laughs> that, you know, I, th I thought we were going to get really cold and suffer. And so, but anyway, the thing is that the wood was right where we were stopped, but that place was not sheltered. So I said to Aledina, let's go find a sheltered place. Let's see if we can find a cave. You know, the, the area is full of caves. And she had such resistance. She said, Daphne, I cannot take a step. I cannot walk. And the truth is that I needed her help. I could do it, but uh, I also felt exhausted and I needed her help. I could not carry all this wood by myself. Right. And we did go up and down a bit and we explored and there was no other, there was no wood elsewhere. So we really had, as far <laughs> as we could understand, we really had to carry all this wood wherever it was that we were going to find our sheltered space. So anyway, we, she was insisting in lighting a fire where we were. And so we did. And 
I, it was cold still because of course it was not sheltered. So the fire was big, but it was keeping us somewhat warm. But basically I was so cold all night long that I didn't get any sleep. And Aladina's period was coming and she was feeling weak. So I stayed up and I was keeping the fire all night long to keep her warm and so she could sleep at least. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. So, uh, yeah, so I, di I didn't sleep, you know. More. So now it's like the second night in a row that I'm not sleeping. And so we began the walk in the morning. And yeah, cut a long story short, my body was giving up. I was feeling like I'm going to fall asleep as I'm walking. And then we were walking and walking and walking, but I needed regular stops to rest. Um, and, you know, it was actually, I was in a good mood despite all that. And the nature was fantastic. And I felt at home and the energy of the place was just, yeah, it was incredible. And, and I got to, well, we got to a point where, you know, I'm afraid of heights. And it was, it was very narrow, the path. And there was a cliff like that of 500 meters. And it was uh, all, uh, you know, like the rocks were broken into small stones. So it was very unstable for me. For, for, for my... anybody who doesn't know meters, that's about 1,400 feet. <laughs> that's a, a long way. Yeah, and it was, it was just steep. Like there was no, if you fell, <laughs> there's no way back, you know. And, you know, even the terrain was very rough. So you, you, really, you wouldn't survive if you fell. But the thing is, what happened for me was not so much the height because I, I stayed focused on the path and I wasn't looking down and I could handle that. But what was happening to me is I, I was at a point where I could not trust my body anymore. I, my feet were wobbly, I was aching. Um, I, I, and, and the thing is in the past I've had experiences where I have fell quite a few times in terrain like that. But it was safe there because you just fall and you hurt yourself a bit, but it's not, um, you're not falling off a cliff, you know? So my memories were like, you always fall in this terrain. <laughs> so this was, this was the, the thing that was in the background. And on top, I could not trust my legs. They were wobbly and painful and my ankles were painful and everything was painful. And I didn't, you know, and so, and so, I was, and I was also, um, Eladina was more confident, but what was happening is that she made, you know, that when there is a wobble, she would make a noise, you know, but that, that didn't mean like she's falling, but she would make, ah, you know, and I, and I was like, Eladina, don't do this right now. So I, <laughs> you know, so, so now the, my, lack of confidence it seep, seeped into her too because she was like okay this means that um i cannot wobble if i can't make a noise you know if i if i make a noise i make daphne scared we don't want to scare her even more now so i cannot wobble which means i have to really pay attention on my step which actually there was no need if I mean, the, the path was narrow and yes, the ground was a bit wobbly, but actually, you know, I, I'll tell you why I'm saying this. Um, it, it was a matter of trusting your step. Yeah. You know? yeah. And for her, she had that trust, but, but it, it was not there anymore because I said to her, she cannot wobble basically. <laughs> <laughs> so, but she didn't mind wobbling, you know, she didn't feel like if she wobbled, she would fall, you know, but I just could not hear the, right, right. because I had this fear. So, so now it's like two of us being scared. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so I was, I was stuck to the rock, 
you know, so there was the rock and there was the path and there was the cliff. So I was like a spider, you know, walking <laughs> like this, like crazy. And, um, and, and so, and, and this, Susanna, it was long. I was just, I was just going to ask you, how long was that, you know, it situation? was endless, it was endless. I'll tell you, so we could hear- You're on the hero's journey. I mean, that's like the hero's journey Joseph Campbell talks about. Wow. I mean, it, we could see the village, right? Um, you know, at, at five, 600 meters down. Um, and, but we could, because of the steepness, we could not see how we would, were going to get down there. But that always made us assume that we are on a descent and that we are approaching the village. But we kept on descending gradually, but we were not, somehow it still, it was feeling like really far away. And then suddenly when we were there, we would see a hill that would have to go up. So then we were far away from the village again. And then there was a round bit and then there was, and we could never see what was coming. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it was so frustrating because we all, you know, there was kind of, oh, now it's ending, now it's ending, now it's ending. And it was never ending. Yeah. And we were like this for three hours. And now, you know, what, anyway, just what people were saying is a three to four hour walk. In the end, it took us eight hours, seven and a half hours. And that's because my body was in the state that it was. And you are I, so lucky you didn't try that the night before. Exactly. We could not have made, I mean, Aladina could not even walk uh, 500 meters on the beach, never mind up and down the mountains. I mean, we counted nine times altogether. <laughs> And, uh, and the thing is, at that point, when I was like a spider on the rocks and I was, I could not believe that this was happening. I see one man coming, very confident, you know, going like, boom, when he would wobble and throw the stones away. And, you know, he would even, he overtook me, you know, <laughs> at the narrow path. And um, he was wearing this, I didn't have those, they're really, uh, big hiking boots, you know, and he felt so confident in his body. And I thought, and he said, "Are you okay?" And I said, "Yeah." And, you know, <laughs> yeah. I didn't look okay to him, and he was like, "This is a strange woman, you know. What is she doing? Like over dramatizing the situation, you know? I don't know what was going on." And he said, "But I see him going past like nothing, like you know, it's he's he's walking on an, on the road, not caring about." The cliff he probably or, he probably slept well the night before too <laughs> i guess <laughs> and anyway so i see him and and then uh 20 seconds later i see another man <laughs> coming in the same way like the other guy and uh and then he also asked me he said are you okay? And I said, well, yeah, just a bit scared. And he said, okay, well, you know, there was nothing he could do about that. So he, <laughs> he, um, he carried on. And then thankfully after that, you know, I said to myself, okay, so a lot of what is happening here is in your mind. Um, I mean, for sure, my body was, I, I, I was not fully trusting my body and I was aching and, you know, I was not in the good state that they seemed to be, but I said to myself, okay, um, I don't know, somehow I, I, I gained confidence by seeing them so relaxed and like nothing's happening. So I start walking a bit more, <laughs> you know, not like a spider anymore. <laughs> um, and, but yeah, we carried on, but you know, I was, I was very scared up until the last, uh, few 200 meters I was very scared this last part of the walk um, um, because also yeah the, the, what I considered dangerous was never ending yeah and high and also I start well there was a, 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 a there was a possibility that we would miss the boat there was this thing that oh my god it's taking forever will we ever get there and then there you know i stopped 
because people are saying four hours and we were already taking this long. So I didn't know, you know, what was happening. I knew I was going at a very slow pace, you know, compared to what I normally can do. I, I was aware of that, but I had no way of evaluating my pace and, you know, compared right. to the distance that right. I had to cover. So yeah, up until the very last minute, and because it was so steep, I really could not see the end point. Um, so that's, that's an amazing journey, Daphne. My God. I mean, that's the, you're a warrior woman now. I mean, you can, I think, confidently say I am a warrior woman. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it's so, it's, it's, and it, it relates to what I was saying to you before, like what for someone is a normal experience and so yeah, many yeah. people have done the route. I mean, a few people have died doing this route, but you know, uh, what other people experience as not such a big deal because they're better prepared, because they, they've they been sleeping, because... They're, they're also not doing it as a spiritual pilgrimage, awakening the dragons and the goddess of Crete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a difference there. There's a big difference there. That's not going to be a piece of cake. I mean, you took this on, you know, without really knowing what would be asked of you. Yeah. And and you're seeing it with each walk, what is being asked of you, yeah. and you're doing it. Yeah. And, it's, it's awesome. and, and this is why what I'm saying to you is, is my life story. And I saw it unfolding in front of me because this is what, you know, every time I have a goal and it feels doable and it feels like so many other people have done it and it's not a big deal. But for me, somehow it becomes a journey, <laughs> you yeah. know, and, Exactly, exactly. Well, I can totally relate to that because that happens with me too. I mean, yeah. you know, life is a journey with a capital J yeah. rather than a small J to me. Yeah. You know? And it's like, get the most bang for your buck. What else are we doing? You know, <laughs> it's good for you, girl. Wow. I'm proud of you. Yeah. That's awesome. I guess, yeah, I guess it's a really rich experience, you know, and um, and it's symbolic. That's the whole thing in the shamanic uh, realms. You know, it's like the, the, the things that we experience or, or see or, you know, witness, whatever. It's symbolic of something going on, on the, in the inner world, in the inner life, you know. Yeah. You're having your barnacles scraped off so that you're clean and shiny and, you know, your light can come through. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it feels like that, definitely. Yeah. And so, yeah, um, I, you know, I, um, I'm still landing from it. Um, yeah, it'll take time to integrate it all. And yeah, there was a lot of symbolism that I met. And oh, and this, did I tell you about the Suya, the, you know, the village that we, that I, we didn't find any beds and, and somehow this information came that you remember um, in the ancient times with the earthquake and the destruction, people, we, oh yeah, it was part of the, um, we yeah, had- Yeah, you said about the common currency and- yeah, and we had received this information when I was there with Aladina. It had come through that something about the people's greed, the greed, you know, and the, the, um, that it was related to the destruction that came after, uh, that there was a greediness that was, um, that yeah. had, you know, that was kind of leading yes um, and it does and it is i mean that's what we're currently experiencing at the moment the results of all that negative uh, acquisitive greed and uh, using nature yeah you know um for yeah. our own selfish purposes rather than uh living with nature you know we're yeah. em we're embracing the mother and you're making those steps in crete you're you yeah. are physically making those steps in crete yeah yeah, and I felt I felt this greed in the in this new uh, paradigm of the same area, you know, in the in this new culture, because the people were much simpler twenty years ago in that village, you know, and now it's you know right. I, I 
but that you know they could not even find a bed somewhere to host someone yeah. and yeah. Uh, or in the surrounding villages and to me this is a sign you know of that there is a there is a greed that's yeah. Yeah. that's creating this situation and it's very much against the energy that i feel you know because the uh, you know all the villages here in crete this is part of the main experience that people when you come as a tourist everyone says speaks about the hospitality of the locals and oh. that's why this is a core value that i feel is related to the energy of the island that the locals are bringing through and you find that when you go to the more traditional villages rather than in the cities but even in the cities you know you go to a restaurant and after and it's a tradition that after your uh your meal they always bring you the local spirit mm -hmm. and dessert and you don't pay for it they just bring it they bring a, a kind of dessert and the local spirit and they do this everywhere in all the restaurants Aww. so it's kind of it's like it's there is a culture there is a spirit of hospitality so this is something that you are uh, learning in situ as you're going on so that you can embody this when you do Alethi. Mm. Yeah. It's something Definitely. that you're learning, you, you can, or, or remembering, you know, you're remembering it uh, yeah. as, as the spirit of Crete. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh my God. So I'm going to suggest that we uh, wind up with recording now, and then sure. you and I carry on with, with more conversation. <laughs> so um, thank you, everybody. You'll be hearing more. <laughs> <laughs>